All right, let's see if we are live. Yeah, it just starts this thing live now. It just starts this thing live. <laughs> there you go. Yep, yep, I just hit the button on OBS Studio and this thing just starts. It used to not do that. Whatever, technology's dumb. How the heck are you, everybody? How the heck are you? Drop something into chat. Drop something into chat. Let's go. All right. Come by and say hi. I'm going to vamp for about 10 minutes. Let whoever wants to come on to come on. Do my little administrative thing. And I'm going to move into some segments. And today I want to focus on bullshit. <laughs> Pardon my French. But there's a lot of bullshit. Uh, we have a lot of salesmanship. And I'm a trained salesman, by the way. Went to classes and everything for it. Went to seminars. I've cleared $10 million deals with Fortune 500 companies. I'm aware of how to sell people on things, and I can sniff the bullshit in the air. And this bullshit is centered around homesteading. God, who'd have guessed? Let me just send this there. On now. Well, we'll see how the delay does today. Usually it's pretty bad. But today I'm feeling lucky. Now, how I'm feeling is not necessarily how it's going to go. But we'll see how things, uh, how things end up. All right, let me just get myself situated. Get my notes right here. Got my notepad document. All right. Let's see how things are going. How was the... It shows that I'm buffering. There we go. <laughs> All right, whatever. The show must go on until I get preferential treatment by Starlink. Right now I have Starlink, and it is the best effort package. So Starlink delayed on me for two years. I was supposed to have this in 2021, I think. So fall of 2021. And 2022 came by. No Starlink. At the end of 2022, where we are right now, they sent me a message and said, listen, we're going to have to delay you for another year, but we'll give you the back of the bus treatment. If you want to pay full price, we will give you the best effort as is package, whatever it is, what it is. I'll take it. I don't even care. I just want low latency and I want to be able to talk to you guys right now. I know I have about a 45 second delay between what I see in the chat window and what you see on the screen. So I apologize for that in advance. We'll work on it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to work on it. When I was doing live streams with Krigler, I was at a coffee shop. I was at a friend's house. It was wild. Uh, I am going to go on about the bullshit very soon, though. We're just going to take a few more minutes, get myself situated. Got my notes here. Uh, there is going to be a topic tonight that is going to piss you off, probably. If you are a homesteader especially, because we tend to get attached to things, don't we? We tend to get attached to things. Now, what does that mean? Let's just, let's just unpack that. You become emotionally attached to just some object. Whether that object is a football team, whether that object is a product you like, whether it's a video game you like, or a political ideology that you subscribe to, right? I think it's really weird to become attached to, to a thing. Like, it can't attach itself back to you, so why do you feel any loyalty to that thing whatsoever? Well, I'm going to make that attachment a little easier to sever by giving you some facts and logic, you know, to say why you should get rid of it. And I put a little bit of an agenda onto Twitter. I'm going to try to stick to that agenda because I'm going to, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this video up. I'm going to put clips of it and I'm going to rant and I'm going to rave and I'm going to get a little excited. All right. I'm going to try to talk slower this time because I've been reviewing my footage. I think I talk a little bit fast. So I'm going to try to be more focused with my speech and try to inflect and all that other speech stuff. Speaking from the day of them. Yes. As they do in the Japan. Anyways, I want to talk about sales. I want to talk about marketing. The whole goal of marketing, it is idolatry, actually. <laughs> I'm going on a bit of a kick right now about idolatry. And I go on that kick because we all do it. We all do it. We become so attached to things. We begin to worship things. How do we worship things? Loyalty, time spent uh, caring for, time spent thinking of, uh, hopes and dreams, your future hangs on this thing. The amount of craziness that goes with um, 
homesteading and the number of attachments and the number of things that we put our time and our thoughts into has got to be described as idolatry because it is at the very least ideological. And I think that ideology goes hand in hand with idolatry. We are going to take a look at a few things and I'm just going to tell you why factually speaking, you know, through our rational faculties, why these things are wrong. You can give your heart to Jesus. You can give your heart to Allah. You can give your heart to God. But do not give your heart to freaking Coca-Cola company, okay? Don't give it to Monsanto. Don't give it to Lodge Cast Iron Pans. Don't give it to any of those other companies because they don't love you and they'll never care about you and they just want your money, all right? You're not, a pro, you know, you're not servicing a prostitute, okay? They're not, they don't really love you. These strippers don't actually like you, okay? These corporations don't actually like you. It's the same dynamic as it always is, all right? Now, let's talk about cast iron versus stainless steel. I'm just going to start like nice and light, nice and light. It's a thing that people cook with, right? It's cookware. Here's, here's one. Here's a pan. Boom. Here's a pan. This is a stainless steel pan. This is the kind they use in restaurants. It's a Volrath. Uh, it's probably made of 304 stainless steel. Uh, it scrapes clean, right? So I can go in there with a Brillo pad. Uh, every, if I, I could just bake eggs onto this thing. And if I just put water in this and let it soak for a couple hours, that, that'll just swish off. I can just use my nozzle on the, on the faucet. And all of the egg, all that stuff that was baked on a few minutes ago will just come right off. This is what restaurants use. And if you want things that are efficient, cost-effective, uh, and durable, you're going to want to... <laughs> yeah, no, Red Lord. You're going to want to buy something that a business uses. Because a household, much like a homestead, what happens if they fail? Well, they go to the grocery store. They go to Walmart. They go to Sam's Club. They buy the food they need. What happens when a, a farm fails? What happens when a restaurant fails? When they have a bad year? They're gone. They are gone. So why on earth would you listen to someone who could just go to a grocery store and make all their problems go away versus someone who's going to go to the poor house if they screw up? This pan... Strangely enough, if you're a professional chef, this pan is the only thing standing between you and poverty. So it better work. And it better be cheap. And it better be clean, easy to clean, right? It better be maintainable. Why wouldn't you just take what the business is doing? You know what restaurants don't use, except for very, very like big, posh restaurants, like really expensive ones, right? They're not going to use this, okay? They're not going to use this. This is bloody heavy. All right, let's, let's take a look. A man of data. A man of da People in restaurants also have to do a lot of cooking, okay? So I don't know what that says right now. Only you guys can see it. And if you're doing a lot of cooking, ergonomics matters. This, this pan is about 1.2 kilograms or a, about uh, three pounds, three pounds or so. That, that, that rates, right? So three pounds. All right, similar sized. Cooking with this thing all day, right? You're just cooking with it all day. You're cooking fiend. You're trying to make bin. You're trying to make money. You got a business. This bloody thing is three kilograms solid, six pounds. Okay, six pounds. It's twice as heavy. All right, so it's twice as heavy. It better be twice. It better be twice as good. All right, because you're killing your wrist over it. I'm trying to move this thing around. But look at it. Does that look good to you? What do you see in there? What do you, see? you see food. You see food. Because the way that you clean, you also see rust. The way that you clean and care for a cast iron pan is to pretty much wipe it clean, oil it, and then bake the stuff off of it, and then wipe that stuff that you baked off of it gone. Look at the bottom of it. Here's the bottom, right? What do you see? You see rust. Okay? So you got rusty, you got rusty metal versus stainless steel. I could, take a, uh, I could take the harshest chemicals to this. I could take the harshest chemicals to this. I could take acetone. I could take water and soap. This can't take water and soap. I can't water and soap clean this cast iron pan. Why does everybody keep using it? It's, it's innately inferior in every way. This is more expensive than this, all right? This is also, uh, this is harder to clean than, Oops. <laughs> then this. <laughs> Just banged my keyboard. At least it didn't spill my drink. This is harder to maintain 
than this. This is harder to maneuver ugh, than this. This is like a workout. Like this is like a workout. Like you want to do a deltoid workout? Okay. You want to, you want workout gear, go buy some lodge stuff. If you're trying to like LARP as a homesteader and do some marketing BS, then by all means buy cast iron. It's, it's innately inferior in every way. It has better heat retention because it has better mass, but you don't need that much heat retention. Like what on earth are you doing? <laughs> and if you want heat retention, there's other ways to get it. Maybe only use this once in a while when you really need that heat retention, but it is a specialized tool and specialized tool goes in the drawer in the back room, not in your kitchen. You use it once a year, face it. But why do so many people use this innately inferior product? Right? Here we go, like Lord Sandwich is saying, like you just give this thing a quick soap with scrub. It is so fast to turn this thing around. If you're going really crazy at it when I used to work at a restaurant, you turn the heat up super high on the hot water. You get a Brillo pad. So you'd have the nozzle of the hot water hanging over above, above you. You have your Brillo pad and you just go ham at it. Because between the hot water and the force of that Brillo pad in your hand, you could pretty much turn that pan around. And sometimes the chef needed the pan like right then and there. All right, so this is, why are people buying inferior products? That has to be marketing. And the reason why is because this stupid cast iron pan is hanging on the wall of Cracker Barrel. Why is Cracker Barrel making decisions for you? Why, is, why are a bunch of mommy bloggers out there with their stupid recipes making decisions for your home? How do you feed your family? That is completely ridiculous. Any, no serious endeavor would ever allow that low level of scrutiny and that low level of decision making of everyone else is doing it, so I'm going to do it. You know, if you want to live like that, I've got some crypto and FTX to, you know, sell to you, for goodness sake. Mm. Why are you making decisions like this? You are a responsible homeowner. You're a responsible landowner. You, if you want to take yourself seriously as someone who's going to raise a family, just a family, just have, be responsible for anyone besides yourself, you need to start making rational decisions. I'm not telling you to throw those cast iron pans out. They are specialist tools. Like they have the good heat retention. That's all they got. I could go soak that pan, that stainless steel pan in my lake. Or it's not, it's not a lake. It's a pond. I wish I had a lake. I could have lake trout. I could just go, I could throw that in my pond and bring it out and then just give it a quick coating of like vinegar and then wipe it and it'd be good. Right? So don't, don't tell me it's some sustainability thing of like, oh, if the SHTF, right? The stuff hits the fan. We're all going to need to use cast iron. No, not at all. It's rusty garbage. You know what I need is I need pots that don't rust, that don't require oil to keep them clean. Right? One needs soap. The other one needs oil. And, and the, the stainless steel barely needs soap. Okay. So why are people buying into this cast iron? It's because of the aesthetic. As I said, it's on the freaking wall of Cracker Barrel. So people decide that it has a place in their home and it feels country and folksy. You know where the real homesteaders are, by the way? The real homesteaders are in South America and Southeast Asia. They're in Africa. Okay, they're not using cast iron, right? They're not, they're not also spending a lot of money on heating. They're not spending a lot of money on anything. They're growing a lot of their own food. You could look in the past if you want, but remember, the past is distorted. America's past the entirety of America's past has been hijacked by corporations. Just like, just like Santa Claus was hijacked by Coca-Cola, our entire national identity, heritage, culture, all of this stuff has been hijacked by Little House on the Prairie. It's been hijacked by numerous cowboy movies. Like, you know how many superhero movies we have right now? That is how many cowboy movies they used to have. That's how many frontier movies they used to have back in the day. All right, so take the comic books and what those movies did to them and then imagine the American frontier and imagine what those movies did to them. Our entire cultural zeitgeist when it comes to our frontiersmen is completely off the freaking rocker. We are way off the, way off the path that we should be. We're not making any sense. You know what those frontiersmen used? They used the best technology they could possibly afford when they went out to the frontier. They bought the best wagons. They bought the best wheels. They got the best ox they could. They got the best supplies, the best rifle. They bought, the, they bought what they needed. They bought the best. So why are you buying second best? Why are you doing the same thing that our ancestors did, that if they had their, our options, they wouldn't do that. They would definitely not do that. Are you kidding me? 
That, that's twice as much. Do you want your, your crockery could weigh like 50 pounds. Do you need it to weigh 100? Like weight does actually matter. So anyways, the, the measurement and efficacy of what we do makes a big difference on our decision making. And as responsible heads of household, we have to be beholden to our decision making. All right, so when I, the, one of the first videos I did as I did a nutritional analysis, right? I, as an engineer, I took a look at what homesteading is for me, and that is food self-sustainability. I want to be food self-sustainable, not, not sustainable in any other way. I just want to be able to grow my own food because food is perishable. It goes bad. I'm going to need to refresh it. Fruits and vegetables every, every two weeks at, at the least frequent. Um, flour and... Other staples, that's got to be refreshed maybe once a year, once every two years, tops. And everything in between, right? I can stockpile a lot of things. I can deal with high gas prices. It is what it is. I can store gas for a year if I use fuel stabilizers. But what I can't do is I can't go without food. I can go without water because I actually have natural springs on my property, but that's, that's a special case, right? I have to make logical decisions when it comes to my actual mission. My actual mission is food self-sustainability. So what do you, what's the first thing you wanna do when you're asking, hey, Alex, or hey, farm engineer, hey, anybody, I wanna be food self-sustainable. You, first you ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? What do you need to grow? What do you need to eat? So one of the first videos I have on my channel, probably like the second or third one, is a full nutritional analysis. Much to my surprise, and I will show you guys here, let me just pull it up. Let's see if I can do this in a, in a decent way. Much to my surprise, I found out that vegetables are basically garbage. Like you, you, using up any time to grow vegetables is a, an act of, uh, I, I wouldn't say narcissism, but I would say it's, it's a, here we go. Pop that up. Boom. Yeah. Uh, growing a lot of vegetables is a total waste of time, which eliminates, by the way, this simple fact, if you want to be food self-sustainable, get rid of, you don't have to grow hardly any vegetables, eliminates the entirety of permaculture because all of the permaculture crops are some sort of fruit or vegetable, okay? Now, you can grow an orchard, grow apples if you want to make cider. cider. Um, Arkansas, I think it's Arkansas Black is a good variety of apple if you want to do cider, right? But like, other than as a chemical, like alcohol or vinegar, whichever one you want to do with apple, um, it has no other purpose, right? You want, you want to see what an apple does for you? Actually, let me pop over here. I'm going to hide a bunch of cells just so this goes smoother. This is my nutrition calculator. I use it personally. I would love to have someone help me build this and put it into a dashboard. But right now it's just on my computer. It's also on my uh, Google Drive. People can't access it, but I mean, it would take probably two or three hours just to figure out how it worked and how you can change it. I'll do a live stream once I clean it up. So here's all here's a bunch of meats and milks. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to hide them. I'll, I'll just leave the pollution pollution on here. There we go. Let's put an apple in here. Let's put an apple. All right, here's one apple. One cup of apples. What's that get you? It gets you nothing. <laughs> it gets you 3% of your calories. It gets you some dietary fiber. It gets you some vitamin A. I wonder if I didn't complete this or something because I, I believe it gives you some vitamin C. But I can show you what it does for you. All right. So if I go to self uh, nutrition, so there we go. Nutrition data.self.com, which pulls from the USDA, which USDA has its own problems. I'm not going to lie. It's got its own problems, but this is as best I can get. There you go. Fruits and fruit juices. There we go. Raw with skin. There we go. This is apples raw with skin. This is the nutrition label for it. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that, but look, look at this. Okay, so this is one quarter or chop, one cup. Okay, one cup. Let's say we got one large apple. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? <laughs> yeah, bullshit. It's got 17% of the vitamin C you need. This is like one-tenth of what a tiny red hot pepper will do for you. Okay, so if you're thinking vitamin C is some rare commodity, you just haven't had enough peppers or tomatoes. Tomatoes are okay, but they're kind of a pain in the butt to grow. I actually would not recommend tomatoes for beginners, except for the fact that learning how to fail at tomatoes is a really good lesson in, in disease management and pest management. But look at this. I'm going to blow it up even, some even more. I'll blow it up even more. 
No, just like that. Okay. Like, what is this for? It has some carbohydrates. It's got some fiber. So in my video that I did in my channel a year ago, more than a year ago, I said that apples are pretty much just a, a, a fiber, a fibery water, sugar, like candy. It's just like, it's not even that much sugar, right? It's not even that much sugar. Is sugar on here? Should. Okay, sugar, 23.2 grams. It's like a tiny amount of sugar. It's not a lot. You put more than that in your coffee. It's got a little bit, it's got some vitamin C, but the rest of it's garbage. Why would you grow apples? You put all that work into an apple orchard and this is what you get. And, and that's okay. If you want to have an apple orchard, go, and have, go ahead and have an apple orchard, all right? I don't want to rain on your parade. But the fact is, is that is it worth, like, ask yourself, is it worth it to have this orchard? And to me, when I did this math, I was like, oh, no. Okay, well, then I've eliminated entire, I've eliminated $3,000 of what I was going to invest into making an orchard. I've eliminated uh, probably two hours of labor a week with a 20-hour initial investment of labor. All of that's gone. Like, if I want some apples are a luxury good. That's fine if you have luxury goods. You should have luxury goods on your farm. But you also should ask yourself, is this worth it? Me, my luxury good is just double my egg ration, and I'll be happy. So here we go. Apples are garbage. I didn't finish entering the nutrition data, but you saw the nutrition data. It's, it's not worth it. Because here's, here's hot chili peppers. Look at them. The red hot chili peppers, they might be like kind of a washed-up band from the 90s. They had, they had their day. But red hot chili peppers are really damn good for vitamin C. I, this is one. Oh, this is a green. All right, so here we go. This is a green hot chili. One pepper or 45 grams. 45 grams is nothing. It gives you more than enough vitamin C. So you're not going to get scurvy. You might burn your tongue. It is what it is. You just, you just chew on that Thai chili pepper. You just, just chew through the tears. That's what my dad used to tell me. My dad is a champion at eating spicy food. I don't know how that tiny like little baby Yoda looking Indonesian man can do it. But he, he doesn't, I don't swear he doesn't feel pain. I mean, he didn't. <laughs> that's probably, that's how he got through the divorce. He just didn't feel a thing. Didn't feel a thing. But look at this. Okay, so I've got on this left side of the screen here, you see my calories and all everything that's dark green is stuff that you're getting enough of. Okay? Notice how vitamin D is red. Vitamin D, if you want that, you need to just be in the sunshine. Okay, get a get a UV light. They used it in Siberia. You can use it if you need it during the winter months, but it's get enough sunshine and be fine. <laughs> Trust me, you're gonna be outside getting plenty of sunshine. You will you will you will look Italian. If you, if you look Irish now, you're going to look Italian in a year. All right, so here's what I'm eating. One cup of buckwheat. Two medium potatoes. Right? Quarter cup of sunflower seeds. And that's with the holes. All right, roasted peanuts. One half a cup of roasted peanuts. That's just snacking. Like, a half a cup is nothing. That's like this, this much. Like, that's much. Tiny. Tiny amount. That's probably going to grow on... Uh, it's, it's trivial to farm that much, Right? If you want to take this and multiply it by 365.25, which is the number of days per year on average, which includes leap year, 365 divided by 2 is uh, 182.67, I think, with that 0.25 in there. I don't know. I'm not a freaking math magician, okay? But it's like, it's not that much. That many cups... I have to figure out how that comes out to, but you're, you're probably talking like a 10 by 10 field of peanuts there. I don't know. You can look at university extensions and find out how much lands it takes to, uh, to grow X amount of food. Pa All right, pepitas, pumpkin seeds. Uh, the Mexicans call them pepitas. There is whole and holeless. Holeless is the green ones you'll see at the grocery store. They're really good. You should try them. They're very, <laughs> they're super good for you. The reason why I put them on this list is they pretty much are a, they're a, a mineral pill. Copper, iron, magnesium manganese which i think i always thought of as like a knockoff magnesium like manganese is like the, the crappy dollar store version it's a totally different chemical just ignore me i don't know phosphorus just in case you need to glow in the dark all right and for some reason omega-6 which you'd think is being like fish oil omega fatty acids but no it's in a freaking pumpkin seed you've got to do the numbers these numbers don't the numbers don't lie 
right? You have to do the numbers or else you're going to be flying blind. But no other homesteader does this because they're all a bunch of frauds. I'm sorry. They're all a bunch of freaking frauds. They say that you can survive off the food you grow and then they don't quantify how much you actually need to grow. Eggs, six a day because you're freaking Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, right? right? So you're going to eat six freaking eggs a day. That's not that much, actually. Like that's, a, that's like an omelet in the morning and then you have some egg bread later on that day. Like egg goes in almost everything. I, I crack three of these. I crack two of these in a ramen, okay? So I crack two eggs in a, in a ramen, which you really should if you, if you eat ramen. You should put something else in it. It's going to make it more substantial. And I'll crack like four of these into a, into a fried rice or something like that. Boom. I've got seven eggs then. Wait, <laughs> six eggs. Man, my math is bad. All right, anyways, uh, I got half a pound of lamb meat. I just harvested 86 and a half pounds of lamb meat which includes the bones, which is a bunch of BS, but hey, listen, all right, it's the best measurement I got. So let's say it's 70 pounds of lamb meat if you remove the bones. And by bones, I mean like the ribs. I didn't like keep the spine in there or some huge bones or anything. It's not like a freaking leg in there. Um, but like, let's say you got 70 pounds per lamb, which is pretty good, okay? So 70 pounds, that gets you for 140 days worth of meat, of lamb meat. I put lamb meat on here because lamb is super easy to grow. Uh, deer meat, you have to hunt and it's seasonal. And goat meat is, goats are a bunch of a-holes. I don't know if you've ever met a goat, but I've never, I don't like them. They also are escape artists. So like the lambs don't want to escape anywhere. They don't, they just want to stick their heads in the dirt and then eat grass. But goats want to keep jumping on things. It's infuriating. Although very cute. Although <laughs> being cute is kind of an enemy to, uh, to shooting them with the, I shot mine with a 22 rifle in the head. Uh, Man, what they don't show you in movies is that when you shoot something in the head, it does not die immediately. It is. You just got to sit there and wait it out. And then we get in there and get the throat. But that'll be a video for another day. We got I'm going to do a slaughter live stream in about Christmas Eve time. Like maybe the day before. Whenever I slaughter this other lamb, because I got one other remaining. I'm going to do a nice live stream. And it's not going to be on YouTube. I'll tell you that much. I, that'll get me, this tiny channel gone in a minute. Let me see what the chat's doing. Let me see what the chat's doing. Chat's doing nothing. Feel free to chat, guys. I do respond to your chats. I'm trying to respond a little bit less frequently just so I don't break up the, the video, right? But I do want to respond to you guys, and I do want to see what you guys have to say. All right, so two cups of sheep milk. That's for uh, not actually for vitamin B2, but it's for vitamin. It's for calcium, vitamin calcium. There you go. That's a vitamin. <laughs> All right. We're getting a lot of phosphorus. I think our piss actually might glow in the dark if you eat this much phosphorus, but I think you just pee all this stuff out if you have too much of it. There's a couple of things you can't have too much of. All right, there's a few things, but there's not many. Da -da -da -da, that's it. All right, so red, what are we growing here? What are we growing? We're growing buckwheat, which grows like a weed. We're growing potatoes, which also grows like a weed. Sunflowers, which grow pretty easily. Um, Peanuts. If you can't farm peanuts, man, you might as well just hang it up. Pumpkins. Pumpkins are like a pest. Like I've had farmers request I destroy the pumpkin vines for them and get rid of the pumpkins because they keep coming back. So pumpkins are a no-brainer. Just put them down by a water feature or someplace that's going to get you know regular rain and good water retention and be fine. Eggs. All right, so now you have the chickens. So now you actually have a chore now, okay? All right, what, what else next? Lambs. I don't really maintain the lambs I have. I built them a nice infrastructure. They got a barn. They've got two acres penned in. They go out and do their thing. But other than that, I don't, I don't have to give them any daily attention. Now, milking them is going to take some daily attention. But remember, the only thing we want from milk is calcium. You want to just, a lot of calcium you just get from your water too. So this is not a holistic system, okay? You get nutrients from more than just your food. You get it from your water. You can get it from supplements. So if you don't want to have, if you don't, you can avoid an entire daily chore if you just have calcium to eat. You know, have an Alka-Seltzer. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever has calcium. Was it Tom, Tums? Yeah, eat some Tums. And then boom, peppers. I just made your life so much easier. Now you're completely food self-sustainable and you're growing like four things. You're growing like pumpkins, which grow themselves. You're growing sunflowers, which need some attention. You're growing peanuts, which I have not grown peanuts yet. So I don't know how hard that is. But if friggin' Jimmy Carter's brother can do it, I'm sure you can too. All right. Uh, you got uh, buckwheat, which I have grown and it's super easy. Just make sure you manage weeds and you till the land properly and do all that good stuff. Uh, and uh, what was it? Sunflowers. I said sunflowers. Uh, pepitas, pumpkins. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And the green peppers. And green peppers grow really easily. 
you'll i've got a huge i had one plant of cayenne plant producing and it produced an entire chafing dish worth of peppers dried up for me so you know no no factor there no problem all right let me change my focus back yeah so there it is i just did something that no other homesteader does is do a freaking nutritional analysis at least notionally so you have some idea of what you have to do because what this thing drove me to do was to look at what I'm growing and say, is this easy to grow? Is it reliable to grow? Is it cost effective to grow? Does it give me the yields I want? And I could break it down into how many hours a day I'm spending on it. That's why I can grow all this stuff and spend like 30 minutes or an hour a day. I am not, I have, I'm a full-time engineer. I, I sit at this computer and I um, do like tech support calls and I do uh, application development, right, as an application engineer. And, and I can live a full life. I, I work from home. I have the work from home lifestyle and I have this tiny hobby. I probably spend more time doing dishes than I do caring for the homestead once I've set everything up, right? So you're gonna have a weekend project that lasts a while. But after that, it's just, it, it's just maintenance, just a little bit easy. Once a year, once every six months, I'll clean, you know, my wife will clean the chicken coops that sort of thing. It's not hard. It shouldn't be hard. But the reason why we seek things out that are hard is because of that marketing I was telling you about. Most of marketing is there to take advantage of your imposter syndrome. It's there to take advantage of the fact that you don't feel like you deserve what you have, right? You don't feel like you deserve what you have. You feel like, oh, there's got to be more to it. And then you're going to guess what? Those who seek shall find and be sold. <laughs> Those who seek shall be sold to. If you're looking for a harder way of doing things, I guarantee you someone's going to sell it to you. And a lot of times the harder thing is under the guise of making things easier for you, right? You have to try stuff out yourself. I've tried all kinds of products. I don't trust chicken doors because if that thing fails, all my chickens could be killed in a single night. Some ornery fox or something comes around and scratches at it. And then all my chickens are gone. I'd rather just close the thing myself. That one is worth the chore for the reliability, right? We talked about vegetables and how my, my, uh, my whole schedule here, my entire growing season does not depend on any vegetables. There are no vegetables in it. And guess what? I have another version of the spreadsheet that has no meat or milk in it because I had a vegan client, a vegan person ask me, hey, what, do I, what can I grow? And guess what? They had to grow a lot more vegetables. That's fine. If you want to grow more vegetables, that's totally fine. But you don't have to. You can grow things that just look after themselves like lambs and chickens. Like chickens, you just throw food into their pen so they have to forage. You do that once a day. Uh, you got to clean their, clean their coop like once every six months. Not a big deal. Uh, another thing I want to take a look at and make fun of, I'm going to go ahead and queue it up here. See if I can queue it up. Um, I'm going to find it. Come. All right. And it is, oh. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. No. Uh, chicken tractors. Chicken tractors for old people. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find the video. I wonder if that was the video. Okay. If when I hear about marketing BS, this is what I imagine. I'm going to mute this tab. I'm going to mute the site. We're going to go in here. And I just want to, I think in here, this is the same guy who did the chicken tractors for old people. What the, what the fuck is this? Like, what is the point of this, right? This chicken tractor thing. Okay, so you have a cage and they're free range. So it's caged free range. Does this make your life easier? Does it do something for the soil? Because if you want chicken poop on your soil, you can just go over to where they roost. Like, look at that gap right there. Like, look at that gap. I want to see that gap. He thinks he's showing off something that's cool. He's showing off some bullshit. Look at that gap. Yeah, dude, a dog, anything, a coyote can get under that. What's the point? The, the main point of a chicken coop is to protect the chickens, and this thing is failing to do it. Okay? It's on wheels. So what are you going to do? Move it every day? You're going to move it every day. Is that what you're going to do with this stupid thing? Mobile shelter. Why would you need mobile shelter? Like chickens don't, chickens are not like a bunch of retired old Florida people going around, like having to go in an RV in the Southwest. Okay. They don't need to. 
they're not that smart. They barely understand their own environment. In fact, this would maybe disorient them. Oh, it's an electric fence. What do you freaking do? Is the, is the fence down below them too? Because that's where the predator is going to come. Right there. I don't even see where the electric fence is. What's electrified? You're full of shit, dude. Sorry to call you out, but I'm kind of sick of these homesteaders because I've seen so many bull shots on here. Let me go to one of my old... Um, oh, whoops, that's, that's his channel. I'm going to go to... Uh, see if the farm engineer will do it. I don't know if that works or not. There we go. Jeez, my, my ability to maintain a beard. I look like the quartering there. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the amazing chicken tractor. Absolute bull. Let's see if I can... If I got this, there we go. People love these chicken tractors, and I think it's just because they like Joel Salatine. And they like the idea of it, but liking the idea of it is is exactly what marketing is. There we go. Here's, here's what I wanted to find. <laughs> Dang, I had some good muscles back then. Still do, but I look like a really buff like tech support dude. <laughs> I look like a buff Indian guy. Like, look at this. Look, look at all the work this guy is doing. This guy's a chump. How many hours do you think he spends a day doing this? By the way, watch. There's going to be one that escapes. There's going to be one that escapes. I think it's in this video. If he keeps going. No, nah, no, maybe not in that one. Maybe not in that one. I don't remember where I got that video from. I'll have to find it. But, like, this is insanity to me. What the hell is the point of this? What is the point of this? Please tell me what the point of this is. Is it to dig the land up? Then just go and buy a, like, yeah, look, build a better chicken tractor. This is the most, yeah, look, there's the one that escaped. He has to put it back. I sped this up maybe 10 times. So he's got to walk out to the field and he's got to pull all these things. And if any of them escape, right? Like, dude, if a dog, if a pack of dogs comes through, a pack of dogs from, an, according to Greg Judy, a pack of dogs tore apart 300 sheep in a single night. Full grown sheep. Rip them to shreds. Dogs are pretty strong, okay? Especially wild dogs. Like, the, the dog you have, take the biggest, toughest dog you've ever seen that was, like, a domestic dog. Wild dogs actually have to exert themselves and hit the gym, like, basically hit the gym that is called nature. They are huge. They will actually knock that chicken tractor over, and they will tear those chickens apart. You will lose your entire flock. So every moment, every minute, every second you spent caring for that chicken flock before, up to that moment of death, was a waste of time. All of that money you sunk in was a waste of time. Everything you did was a waste of time. And guess what? You're going to put your land up for sale, and you're going to say, forget it. Maybe I'm just not meant for this. No, you, you followed a fool. You followed a charlatan. You followed a salesman. I have yet to find a real reason for chicken tractors to exist, except to waste your time and put your chickens in way more danger than they need to be. Just put them in a pen and then lock them in the coop at night. My coop is like Fort Knox. My coop is eight is about two feet off the ground. It is a metal siding shed with uh, like chain link down below and above that hay, right? So that's their floor. Okay. They've got a roof that's metal. This thing is, is uh, made of two by four pressure treated studs as the framing for it. And with that sheet metal bolted between all the cracks, this thing is, is like friggin' Fort Cox over here. Okay. It's for, it's for the roosters. It's for the chickens. And I just lock it up every night. I, it takes me about two minutes. I just walk out there. I'm going to do that after this video is done. I'm going to walk out there and do it. This stuff is a waste of your time. This person is wasting their life. This person's giving their wife's boyfriend lots of time with their wife right now. <laughs> like, you do not need to waste this much time. This is pure madness. Why? If, if it was a real legitimate practice on farms, don't you think farms would do this? And not just some, like, rando and granola california or washington state who wants to sell chickens at 20 dollars a piece at the farmer's market hell no also he had like silkies and stuff in his chicken coop that's those are bullcrap chickens okay those chickens don't they're they're good at sitting on um they're good at sitting on eggs they're not really good for much else see now i gotta go all the way back with this guy all right so let's do the variety of those Okay, actually, maybe that's not a silky. He's got a bunch of uh, Rhode Island dead. It looks like he's got some barred rock cross and some speckled. I don't know what these things are. All right, for first off, if you're actually running a legitimate operation, you have the exact same chickens. Like, once you've found a chicken that gives you the yield curves you want, that's what you use. That's all you use. This, this structure is obviously not made. This looks like he slapped it together, too. It's not. 
it's not like you could just tear a hole in this fabric in the top. I guess the electric fence is just around them. Dude, buy a lawnmower. What are you hoping to accomplish? I'll watch this guy's video later. I mean, I'll do a reaction to it. But like, what the hell? What the hell is this for? This contrivance. And the thing is, most people fall for the sales pitch because they've never heard anyone just say, well, that's dumb. Right? That's dumb. Like, how many women would you say from Gwyneth Paltrow's ridiculous, like, fashion lines if you just said, well, that's dumb. Don't put Jade there. That's not where Jade goes. Jade goes where the sun does shine, okay? What are you doing? <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. Why would you, why would you do this? I'm, I'm telling you, this is the kind of marketing bull, you know, bull that you're going to see on the internet. And this homesteading stuff really go, it, it, it started with the hippies trying to become holistic and of nature. And then the internet came along and just cranked it up to, to a hundred, right? And Every stupid idea is now the new technique. It's, go oh, if it, this is too easy. It's got to be harder. I must be doing something wrong. I better do it the hard way. Don't do it the hard way. Do it as easy as possible. I am extremely lazy, and I'm an engineer who has closed million-dollar deals with Fortune 500 companies and has gotten that, you know, products on the shelves. If you go to Home Depot, uh, if you go to Home Depot, yes. If you go to Home Depot, there's an exclusivity deal with the product I helped build. If you go to Home Depot, you will see the product that I worked on over in the tool section. It's the most expensive tool there, probably. Okay, unless they got like uh, uh, hammers by, what's that German company that starts in H? I keep wanting to say Heinz or Hertz. Hilti. It's, if you, unless you see a Hilti there, my tool is the most expensive one, and it's sold pretty well, and it's very well reviewed on Amazon, okay? I know what I'm talking about. These guys don't. From an engineer's perspective, which is the most, is the perspective that requires the most honesty, most accuracy, and most uh, clarity of mind. You know, go ask the Columbia crew and the Challenger crew about that. What happens when we don't have clear minds? What happens when we let a bunch of marketers, managers, salesmen, BS artists make decisions? That's what happens. Okay, so let me make the decisions here. I'm an engineer, and I'm going to tell you that this is bullcrap. I don't, I don't see the point of these chicken tractors. Okay. But I also still don't see the point of like trying to go back in time. This this weird like return, this Luddite thing. Okay, if you're if you don't understand technology, then by all means don't use it. If you find that technology starts using you, because social media is using you, if you can't handle that, then don't use it. That's fine. That's totally legitimate to abstain from using technology if it is not to your liking, if it's not making your life better. But to just broad brush and say like, oh, I'm anti-technology. I was called a techno progressive the other day. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Everyone's a techno progressive. Do you, the Amish are techno progressives. They're just slower. Okay. They, they, they go and talk to their bishop. Their bishop will approve things. Like Amish will use industrial equipment. They will just buy a diesel generator. So it's theirs. It is off grid. All right. They will use factory equipment on a diesel generator and they, the thing is, they don't show that to you because, you know, the, part of their industry is based on tourism, marketing, in other words. Okay. All this like down home country back to whatever the hell is a bunch of BS. Okay. I went to a Mennonite, um, uh, there's a Mennonite place nearby where I live that makes whole milk, raw milk, all that stuff. I don't know. This, right from the cows. Like they own the cows. It is a, it is like a tiny factory floor back there. Like through the window, there's a bunch of industrial machines. They're extremely clean. It is a good environment. Why would you not want that for your own homestead? Like, why do you, why'd you want to be a Luddite? Go ahead and right now we're, despite the fact that things seem tough right now, they're going to get a lot tougher. And right now, well, the best time to go and buy equipment was last year or the year before that, which is when I bought all my equipment. I have a flour mill. I have meat grinders. I have butchery equipment. I have hoists. I have um, like pressure cookers. I've got canners. I have all of this stuff. I bought it for about half the price it is now two years ago because I saw where things were going. And if you look through my tweets, you'll see that. I, I told people to buy fertilizer last October and then the price tripled. Okay. Right now, it's not going to get much better. Maybe there'll be a, a little bit of a dip before it gets way worse. Okay. There's going to be a little bit of a dip before it gets way worse. That'll be the best you can hope for. Right now is the best time to go ahead and buy the stuff that you need and I don't think we're going to not have electricity. If you look at like the third world, stop looking back in time because back in time is now owned by the Coca-Cola company and the rose colored glasses are glued to you since birth. All right. Don't look back in time. Look at how other people live elsewhere. Like imagine if the dollar was no longer the petrodollar and we didn't, weren't the reserve cu currency of the world. 
you'd probably see Alabama living a lot like Indonesia. So how does Indonesia live right now? Well, they have electricity. They just don't have it very reliably. That's it. Okay. That's all you have to do. So just buy a UPS and you'll be, you'll be golden, right? It's, it's not that expensive depending on where you are. My state, Tennessee has a lot of nuclear power plants. So we're probably going to be okay. Probably don't know for sure. Nothing's for certain. If I really wanted to go off grid, I'd probably try to get myself two or three kilowatt of uh, solar panels that are off grid and have an inverter. If I want three kilowatts, that would be about 10 solar panels. Uh, they're about 400 watts each, I think. So let's say nine or let's say eight. All right, how about eight solar panels, 300 bucks each. What does that bring me to? Eight times three is, oh gosh, I'm trying to do math live. I want to say it's like 240. Where's my calculator? I have a calculator on here somewhere. Oh, bloody hell. Someone, someone in chat's probably screaming their lungs off right now. All right, so if it's $300 per solar panel, I'm buying eight of them. That's 2,400. I was off by only a factor of 10. Not a lot if you're thinking about astronomical units. <laughs> All right, $2,400 $2, is not that much money. So I could, let's say you add another $600 to bring it to a nice round $3,000. I can run any appliance I want, you know, other than my stove at like full blast. For $3,000, I am completely um, resilient to electrical brownouts and electrical outages or high electrical prices. And you're going to tell me that like, oh, I don't trust technology. Technology is bad. Like you could just own and understand the technology and you'll be completely resilient. Your neighbor is going to be over there like rubbing sticks together while you're over there sitting pretty. Like, okay, you only can like use the kitchen aid during the sunshine. That's fine. What, what do you, are you really like going to your kitchen at night and using the kitchen aid? Just got to schedule your day a little better. Okay. If you have a battery backup, then you can do stuff. Battery backup would be more money. Is it worth it? Depends on how disciplined you are, right? Do you have to use the kitchen aid every single day? Is a, is a cloudy day going to you know ruin you? Right? Probably not. Depends on what you want to do with it. But like I'm saying, most of your concerns can be alleviated with Relatively trivial amounts of money if you just go now, okay? All right, on to the next subject here of, of stupid marketing. Uh, raise your hand if you're in the audience, you're watching this, and you have a pickup truck, okay? Okay, now, now put your, keep your hand up if you use your pickup truck to haul a heavy load of stuff more than six times a month. Keep your hand up. Six times a month. You're using the bed. The bed is like the lengthwise is totally full. It is it is hauling like a ton of stuff. Six times a month. Keep your hand up. Okay. If you put your hand down, you've been you've been bloody swindled. <laughs> I use a Honda Fit. Let me show you what a Honda Fit looks like. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Honda Fit. Honda Fit. Honda Fit. I almost want to have a banana next to it for scale. All right. This is a Honda Fit. I need something to scale with. Give me a picture that has a scale next to it. Man, come on. Just just dude for scale, please. Please, I beg of you. I beg of you. All right, well, this is a subcompact hatchback, okay? It is a subcompact hat. Why is no, if, nobody wants to stand next to it. If you, had a, if you had a Camaro or a Jaguar, you'd have tons of pictures of people standing next to it. I'm gonna look that up. Let's say if you had a Corvette. Okay, let's see if you have a Corvette. Let's see how many people are standing next to the cars. See if people are standing. Oh, not that many. Okay, not that many. Not that many. All right, all right. I was going to make a joke that nobody wants to be in a picture with their Honda Fit because they're ashamed of it. It is a small car, okay? It, it is a small, a small car. I'm going to say dimensions. There we go. All right, okay, okay, okay. What is this, metric? What, I lose a war? I want feet. That's victory units. Oh, look at that. Okay, this guy's got it. There we go. That's, that's pretty good. All right, I'll take that. This is my Honda Fit. Very close to it, okay? I don't have a pickup truck because pickup trucks are like $30,000 freaking dollars for a 20-year-old pickup truck. Okay, I'm not doing that. That's $20,000 I don't have to pay. $20,000 multiplied by the current interest rate. Where's the calculator? Times 0.07% APR. That's $1,400 I'm flushing down the toilet every year. I'm not doing that. That's that's not good business, okay? So if you're going to tell me to get a pickup truck, you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. Because I can haul 28, 
I can haul t a quantity of 20 eight foot long two by fours easily in my Honda Fit. I can haul about 15 10 foot long two by fours in my Honda Fit. I can haul about any equivalent of that. So take a two by four and divide it by two and the number of two by fours divide by two and that's how many four by fours I can carry. You can scale it, right? I've hauled four by sixes, four by fours. I've hauled concrete. I've hauled all sorts of stuff in here. And yeah, my springs get a little depressed, but I make it home just fine and there's no damage to my Honda Fit. My Honda Fit's a beater car too. I just moved a treadmill in the back of it. Half the, like part of the treadmill is hanging out the back. doesn't matter because this Honda Fit is paid off. I don't pay any, there are no payments on this Honda Fit. It is my car. I'm going to run it to the ground. All right. I did not buy a new vehicle. I bought a smart vehicle in 2014 and I've been using it for eight years. Good Lord. That's an old car. And I'm not going to buy a new car. I'm not going to buy a used car because I don't have to. I'm saving at least, I don't know, pickup truck is the least you can get for a decent one, maybe $10,000. That's $10,000 you don't have to spend. How many trips are you making? I said, keep your hand up. And by the way, you can put your hand down. Good Lord. You got some strong, strong uh, deltoids, deltoids and biceps. Uh, if you kept your hand up the whole time. Okay. The amount to rent a pickup truck is about $80, $100. You know what the payment and insurance is on a pickup truck? It brings it up to like 500 bucks right now if you bought one new. And if you bought one used, it's going to be a little less than that. But guess what? 500 you know, $400, $500, you're better off just renting a truck from U-Haul and getting the insurance. And you could wreck that truck. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Go and, if you're only using it once a month or once every two months or like you're using it a couple times a year, why do you need a pickup truck? Why are you hauling that stupid thing around all the time? I could go rent a U-Haul or rent a, a different pickup truck or go on Craigslist and I hire a dude with a pickup truck or go to my neighbor's house and ask them to haul something for me and I slip them, a, you know, 50 bucks and it's so much cheaper. Why are you wasting money? You call yourself a head of a household and you're out here buying a pickup truck you don't have to buy. You know, go ahead and explain, you know, why you have credit card debt and a brand ass new pickup truck that you use once a month ashamed of yourself it's ridiculous don't do ridiculous things all right i told you i was gonna piss you off maybe i pissed you off maybe i didn't that's not a thing i'm trying to do it's just what i ha it's just what happens when i open my mouth and start saying stuff that's true because if i take a look at the rental for a u-haul go and compare the rental for a u-haul and then compare that with an auto loan with insurance you got to remember the insurance because insurance is pretty high especially if factors i don't know i digress go do the math yourself and come back in the comment section or wherever and tell me how much, how much is the U-Haul rental of a pickup truck? Which, by the way, you can get like a 10-foot van, too, for not that much more money. It's like goes from 70 cents a mile to 80 cents a mile or 90 cents a mile. And it's like doesn't add any flat rate, like flat fee to it. It's like just, just pay for the stupid rental. You don't need to buy a pickup truck. It's so stupid. It's like, what do you think all the rentals are going to get nuked? Trust me, if a meteor hits the United, if the meteor hits the world, there's still going to be U-Hauls coming out of California. Trust me, there's, <laughs> you can't stop that. All right, another issue that I see with a lot of homesteaders is they feel like they have to go big or go home, and that is the dumbest thing ever. Go as little as you want. Do not get into debt. Do not get into debt. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so do not get yourself into debt. Do not over do what you're doing and overexert yourself because you're going to burn yourself out. Uh, if you think that your marriage is going to get better because of, by the way, I'm looking at the comments now about, um, I'm looking at the comments right now. <laughs> party car. Yeah. The Fiesta is a party car. That's some good stuff. Yeah. get a, If you can get a free F-150, that's great. I'm sorry. I'm looking at your comments now. I'm laying behind the, uh, the eight ball here. I don't think it was used for lumber, lumber trips. 94. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Pickup trucks, exactly. Truck is for weather. Truck is for weather. If you have rough terrain, your mileage will vary, literally. Like if you have, if, if my driveway was like a mile long, I probably would rethink things. I'd probably be like checking the pricing of doing like asphalt paving the whole thing with the drainage versus getting a pickup truck, right? And then checking to see how often the heavy rains happen. It, your mileage will vary. I'm just saying, just make data-driven choices. Are you the man of the house or not? Okay, is if you are the man of the house, do not let yourself get led around by the nose by some salesman. That is how uh, women get into MLM schemes. Don't be that dumb. Okay, 
Might as well put your money to FTX. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The um, go big or go home mentality with homesteading. Uh, don't don't bite off more than you can chew. Tr- trust me. Like I brag about my marriage a lot. I feel like I'm one of the happy married men on the planet. Maybe I think it's just a lot of us married guys who are having a good go of it don't speak up very much, and I think we should. I'm going to start doing Manosphere Mondays one of these Mondays. I'm going to sit in front of the fireplace over there in front of my stove, and I'm just going to do a fireside chat, and I'm going to talk to you guys about how my marriage works, how things went well, how things didn't go well. This, uh, this homestead is a massive strain on your marriage if you bite off more than you can chew, okay? Like, you want a, you want a good uh, mental description of it? <laughs> you ever seen Forrest Gump? You ever seen the time we're on the shrimp boat in the storm? That's about what it's like sometimes, okay? When you're, when, and, and whoever's going to be playing Lieutenant Dan is going to change and it might vary, bounce back between you and your wife over and over again. But someone's going to be screaming and the other person's going to be wet and scared. <laughs> Guaranteed it. It is not going to do well for your marriage. Do not over, over constrain yourself. Don't buy the chickens till you built the coop, okay? That should be like a country folky saying, but don't buy the chickens unless you have built the coop. Don't bite off more than you can chew. I know it's really, really tempting to go big or go home because I've done it. I know how tempting it is because it's like if I said that alcoholism is really bad because I'm a massive alcoholic, all right? That's, it's not advice, it's a warning. I, this is not advice, this is a warning. I bite off more than I can chew all the freaking time. I try to justify it, but honestly, I'm kind of done with it. Don't do what I did. Just keep it, keep it chill. Keep it chill. Like, always have a lazy get-out solution. Always have a lazy get-out solution for your farm, okay? When you're out there doing your thing, think to yourself, man, if I, if, what's, the, what's the right solution versus the right-now solution? And how good is that right-now solution? I'll give you an example. Uh, I have to build a little shelter for my ducks and geese. I am tempted to just look around on Craigslist for a dog house because I know they live in it and I know it's like 90% of what they need. <laughs> like one of those igloo looking plastic dog things would be great. Just let them in there. Forget it. I'll, I mean, I'll just turn the thing upside down and shoot it with a pressure washer like once a, once a week because they're disgusting, you know, or, or take the bottom out of it entirely. Like have a lazy solution in your back pocket be like, Listen, honey, I know I, I got us into the, I bought, I don't know why I bought 20 geese, honey, but we, they need a place to live. I've got a backup. No, it's not them living in my garage. I'm just <laughs> drinking, just in there with my garage, drinking beers, the bunch of geese. Trust me, it's not as fun as it sounds. Um, have that lazy solution ready. Don't buy off more than you can chew. Have an out. Try to be prepared before you do something. Like before you buy the seeds, even though seeds are cheap, build the raised beds first because you're not I, I still have a whole closet full of seeds i haven't planted maybe planted 10 percent of them i just went on a big seed trip i don't know what the hell i was doing people again if you seek they shall sell if you look for it someone will sell it to you if i'm looking to buy a, a ridiculous number i think i bought like 300 dollars worth of seeds it was retarded it was, it was ridiculous How about 300 dollars worth of seeds and i planted 10 percent of them I really needed thirty dollars worth of seeds. Bloody hell! Why did I do that? Well, because I freaking bought a bunch. Of, I bit off more than I could chew. I thought I'd be able to plant them all, but guess what? We're pretty lazy. We are pretty lazy. We're from the suburbia. We're from the the urban, and even if we're from the rural, we are pretty coddled. Don't like. Don't sign up for a marathon for your first run. Don't. Don't like, try to build everything and make everything on your first year of the homestead. Spend a month of just walking around your land and understanding it. Like, enjoy nature. Enjoy your land. Then build your first raised bed, right? And, and put in some seed trays. Put some cucumbers in the seed tr- seeds in the seed tray. Cucumber seeds and sunflower seeds are some of the easiest seeds to grow. Um, get those in there and just let them do their thing and just go with the flow. And as you have time, do stuff. This should not be hard. That's the reason why I had that whole spreadsheet of the nutritional spreadsheet. I want to know how tall of a mountain am I really climbing here? And the thing is, it's not a mountain. It's like a hill. If you have like a 50 foot by 50 foot field 
and four raised beds that are like eight foot by four foot long. And one of those will take like the, the raised beds, probably two weekends to get four of them built. You know, just do two a day. Keep it, keep it chill. I have a video on my YouTube channel. I don't know if you ever heard of the YouTube channel. It's called The Farm Engineer. Go and look at my, some of my old videos. I actually have a video of me building a raised bed. It doesn't take very long. Uh, do it the way I did it. Uh, find better ways for yourself to do it. I'd be happy to take suggestions. Leave a comment there. But I've I've went through a lot of uh, sourcing. And check the com check the description because I think I have the links to where you can buy the supplies there. And I picked the cheapest stuff and the easiest stuff. Uh, when I do the video, I don't have a post in the midsection. But you should have a post in the middle as well. But the four post ones, mine are still up. They're still good, right? So that worked out just for me. Just make things easy. Do things lazy. It's fine. Don't go bigger. The whole go big or go home thing is some bull crap a salesman whispered to some balding husband with low testosterone to egg him on to buy that stupid Humvee. Not that Humvees are stupid necessarily, but there's a lot of dudes who... <laughs> it looks like a worm driving a tank. Anyways, that is it. I'm going to do... I was going to do permaculture, but I think that deserves its own rant. I don't even know what the hell permaculture is. Okay, I asked somebody what permaculture was and they started describing like cattle ranching. What the hell? Anyways, again, another time. This has been fun. Uh, Manosphere Monday is going to happen next Monday. Look out for it. I'm going to try to make it. Mondays, I'm pretty much wrecked. So I apologize for my inconsistency there or my lack of commitment. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you guys then. And uh, yeah, I am going to head out soon. There we go. And that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching, taking the time. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun. If you know of any other weird marketing boondoggles or sales bull crap, like, get your, like put it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, by the way, I'm seeing you guys talking about, um, talking about land, want acreage and everything. Man, that's awesome. I hope you guys buy it. Uh, let me give you, I'll leave you on, uh, with one tip then because of all that. One of the assumptions is that your land that you live on has to have it all. That is a false assumption. I found it to be much more cheap if you bought uh, a small lot for you to live on um, with a little bit of acreage, like one or two acres. And people want like 10 acres of forest. Go buy that separately. Buy it that's like off grid. Like what? No one's going to in a place where no one's going to build. You're going to get a forest. A forest that is close to a electrical cable plumbing hookup is 10 times more expensive than a forest that's out in the middle of nowhere. But guess what? When you're going and getting firewood or harvesting wood for milling, then bloody like buy your forest elsewhere. Like uh, you could buy your forest out of state too. I was actually thinking about, okay, all right, all right, all right. I can't, I can't not. The, the land in Kentucky is ludicrous. Let's do this. I love the land in Kentucky. We're going to go to land and farm. Land and farm. I want to see... Kentucky, KY. I want to see nothing more than nothing more than 150. Okay, we're we're going cheap, cheap seats, baby. Five acres? That's not enough. I want no pro, acreage. You. I want at least 20 acres. Okay, how about that? How about that? We're in Kentucky. Oh, I got to hit the stupid button. Okay. There we go. There we go. I had a piece of land. <laughs> this guy loves it. <laughs> now he's a broker. Okay. 62 acres. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. 150 acre. Whitetail Properties has a really good YouTube channel, by the way, which you should check out. Uh, it'll teach you how to do everything from skin a deer to, to cut down a tree. So definitely check that out. I wish there was a keyword I could put in. There was a, a place I saw in Kentucky that had a freaking cave system built onto it. Now I know that like there is there's Kentucky's kind of known for its cave systems. All right, whatever. 103 acres for 140 grand. Oh, here we go. Here's here's 50 acres for 30 grand for for the discerning gentleman. Okay, 20 picks. This place is out in the middle of nowhere. There's some kind of animal you could presumably eat. There's some trees. They probably didn't pick the most wooded spot. All right, you got trees. Uh, on that 50 acres, there's got to be some decent trees. All right, this is just picking out the, the hollow spot. But you could put up a hunting cabin, your vacation getaway, 
right? You might even be able to put some like stuff that grows without a lot of uh, intervention. Like you've got some water here. You could probably do something with like if you had like an automated remote watering system or got really fancy. But really, honestly, if you're just using this for lumberjacking land, there's no reason for you to, to have to have your forest where your 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 land is, right? So if you, even if your forest is like 100 miles away, let's say it's 100 miles away, long ass way away. How much, how many days, like how many times are you going to be hauling between your forest and your house? Because if you have the proper equipment and you're just getting a ton of firewood, that's one weekend a year. One weekend a year, you're going to go to this property. You're going to rent a truck because you're a cheapskate like me. You're going to rent a trailer. You're going to go out here with your chainsaw with all your goods. You're going to split the wood. You're going to have the wood splitter hooked up. You're going to be pounding that. Let's see what the hundred, let's see what the expensive property looks like. All right, and you're going to load up on wood and you're going to bounce. And that's it. And guess what you're also going to do is you're going to rent this thing out to hunters and let them hunt on it. <laughs> you know, put an Airbnb on there, off-grid cabin, I don't know. Whatever you want to do. I wouldn't pay $140,000. I'd maybe pay $30,000. Let's see what the cheap ones are. I'm going to just sort this thing. Sort by cheap. Price lowest. What do we got? That's not price lowest. What are you talking about? Oh, this is page three. Okay. I want that dirt, like, off-grid trailer. Back in my day, off-grid meant you didn't pay your electric bill. <laughs> there we go. What do, you got? what do you got here? Scrublands? That sounds about right for 30000 This one's 24000 actually. Let's see if my internet craps out of me or not. There we go. Nope. 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 All right, well, whatever. I guess I don't get to see that land. That's a, But you get the point, right? If you, if you do this in Tennessee, do the same thing in Tennessee. Dang, okay. A lot of these are auctions. I, w I don't know what their what direction that'll go. There you go. There's 22 acres for 30, 135,000. It'll probably be another 100,000 to build a small house there. And I mean, and I mean small, um, but it'll do. 50 for 100. Looks look like a good area too. Look, you buy a freaking island. You want to buy an island? You gotta contact the broker. I have no idea how much that costs, but you can buy a freaking island if you really want to. That's if you want to do some like eyes wide shut stuff down there. <laughs> Where is this? This is the Missouri Tennessee River. That's pretty cool. No photos? I want an island. Not that I want to do eyes wide shut stuff on it, but I want, I want an island. That'd be cool. Yeah, anyways, you get the point. Challenge your assumptions. Try and find wiggle ways out of stuff. Being like a schemey little B word is the way you're going to actually save a lot of money. Like trying to be clever. Don't try to be clever in some complicated way. Just just try and try and deal with some discomfort and derision. All right, like me not having to pay for a pickup truck is well worth the uh, the dirty looks I get in the Lowe's uh, parking lot. It's just my pride. <laughs> Denting my there's no uh, fee required to recover the dents in my pride. Yeah, yeah. If your family has to be. Yeah, exactly. I have a neighbor who, uh, uh, Lord Sandwich, that's a good point. I have, an, I have a neighbor who has a tractor. That's $30,000 at least I don't have to pay. He just comes over once a year and just, just tills some land for me. That's it. Yeah, you can split stuff up too. Like if you, the best thing you could do is probably find a couple of families that are willing to live like within a mile of where you want to live or a couple miles, depending on how rural you really want to go. And then just go in on stuff, like make it shared stuff. Like there are tool libraries out there. I don't know why there isn't farm equipment libraries out there, although the, it would be expensive, right, if someone screwed it up. But if it's all people you know and it's all handshake and someone in there is a diesel mechanic or a hydraulics mechanic, then you're good to go. Find ways of saving money. Dude, my, my family would sleep, like a one generation before me slept in a, a wooden hut in Sumatra, like three or four or five or six to a bedroom. Because, well, it's because it's a hut, right? <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, you got to be, you have to be the one willing to, to be uncomfortable. Now is not a time to be comfortable. So there you go. Also, get to know your neighbors. Orange Post is right. Farmers do share. Get to know your neighbors because they will have all kinds of stuff for you. They'll be awesome. Absolutely. 
Get to know people. Be social. Don't be like most Americans and like hide in your house and never talk to anybody. Okay? Go out and be bake some bread, make a pie, knock on their door. No one's going to turn you away. We all have way much, far more than we think we do. The best way to appreciate how much you have is when someone who has less is asking for your help. And that's how these other neighbors are going to feel, right? It's, and you're going to have stuff that they might need. You might have knowledge, right? Especially if you're like a city dweller or something and you're very educated. Just tutor their kids or something. Help them out. Show them how to use a computer. I was at Rural King the other day and there was a dude who didn't have an email address. It was weird. He was like some old guy. He's like, I don't have an email address. What the hell are you talking about? And I was like, man, I envy you so much. He's lived a good life. He's lived a good life. Well, I hope you all live good lives. I am done. My throat is killing me. Uh, I should have probably had a glass of water next to me here, but I appreciate every one of you coming by and hanging out. It's always a lot of fun. The chat is usually at least 10 IQ points smarter than me, probably because I'm drinking uh, this. What, what do I drink? Evan Williams. Bottled and Bond is pretty good, and that's what I drink. <laughs> you guys are much smarter than I am. You guys are so enthusiastic, too. I love the interactions. You guys are great. I love the fact you guys come back, too. That's, that's really humbling to me. And let's keep it going. Let's have a lot of fun. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central. I'm always looking forward to it. And if, and if you can't join, go and watch one of the live streams after the fact and leave a comment. I'll, I'll definitely read it and say hi back. Uh, I'll probably resume actual videos at some point. But, you know, video production is so hard and live streaming is so easy comparatively. It takes me like two weeks to make that chicken tractor parody video. <laughs> Time well spent. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys have a blessed one. Have a great night. Be safe. Be happy. And eat lots of food. Christmas is only two weeks away. I'm pretty pumped. I hope you guys are too. All right.